Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so this is a part of the series I started a while back called Islam and Western Philosophy. Uh, it's been a while, but hopefully I'm back and uh, able to record a few sessions. Uh, today I want to go back to Nietzsche. I think we started with Nietzsche the first uh, uh, episode. And today I want to dig something out of uh, this book, uh, The Genealogy of Morals. It's one of the uh, well-known books by, by Nietzsche. And supposedly in that book there is a critique of... Uh, some people think it's a critique of religion. I think it's more a critique of the priest. And uh, this is actually not far from the critique of priesthood that you see in the Quran itself. In fact, in one verse, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, min That sometimes we raise these uh, priests and these monks uh, to a very, very high position, almost close to uh, God's position. So in this verse, it says they have taken their monks and their uh, priests uh, and Haber is someone a, a religious scholar right so they have taken all of those people uh, as lords besides or instead of God so yeah it is possible that sometimes we elevate those people even higher than God now in one uh, context this could mean that we take their religious verdicts instead of uh, looking in the scripture, so we now we have re we have replaced their opinions about certain jurisprudence uh, or certain uh, matters of of worship or or anything else uh, instead of looking at the original source. But it by no means this is limited to to only jur jurisprudence. Now there's an interesting parallel uh, in Nietzsche's work. Now, uh, not the same though, obviously, because uh, Nietzsche has uh, this comparison. Uh, if you look in his book, uh, The Genealogy of Morals, uh, throughout the book, he's comparing basically aristocracy with a priesthood. All right. And usually, I mean, I mean uh, throughout the book, more or less, he's viewing uh, aristocracy in, in a good light. Uh, and he's viewing priesthood in a bad light. So he's favoring one over the other. This is not necessarily true in Islam, although if we understand aristocracy to be a high class or the highest class, Islam does not necessarily have a particular problem with the highest class. If, if they're not corrupt, for example, if they're just uh, sitting on top of the hierarchy, Islam does not have a problem with hierarchy in and of itself. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, in fact, the Quran hints to the hierarchy in one verse, uh, uh, and uh, that's okay because uh, there is a benefit, you know, when people are being employed by the people above them and so on. Also, we know from the Sahaba, right? Some uh, Sahaba were very rich, so in those cases, they belong to a higher socioeconomic class. So that in and of itself is not a problem. Now, also let's keep in mind that when we talk about the priest, it's not necessarily the case that a priest is from the poor class or the class that we look at with compassion. No, a, a priest could be uh, viewed as a religious authority. So just like these people are viewed as a form of authority, usually maybe political or economic, we also have the priest uh, having this religious authority. So both of these classes or these types of people have authority. So why do we have a problem then with uh, this uh, religious authority and not necessarily with this type of authority where you have nobles and uh, people of, of the higher class. Well, at least according to, to Nietzsche, and this is one way to poke at it, but one way to look at it is basically how they view evil. And this is really a contrast between bad and evil. All right. Again, this is Nietzsche's analysis. So both identify with a concept of something that is opposite to good, all right? But in the case of the aristocrat, he does not really identify with evil, right? Rather, uh, his idea of something not good is just bad, 
right? So why is this better than evil according to Nietzsche? Well, first of all, it's because bad is not original. In the case of an aristocrat, um, bad actually is an outcome of good. So in the case of, of this uh, uh, class of people, we start with good, all right? And their concern is good. And that good is spontaneous, right? It is uh, natural, it's straight away. It's coming out of oneself, right? So it, it is not superficial. And, and then bad is actually defined in the context of good. So, so bad is nothing but, uh, you know, secondary to good, right? So it stems from good. And hence bad is not original, it is secondary. In fact, he says it's like imitation or something extra or something like a nuance right or a subtlety right so um so they're not uh concerned with bad they're not you know uh, occupied or preoccupied with the concept of bad they don't necessarily label uh, other uh, people or other idea as, as bad it's not their concern it's just uh, some uh, like artifact or some uh, even uh, you know uh, outcome or or some secondary uh, side effect of, of good, all right? And that's important to keep in mind. Whereas uh, you might see other people who are trying to demonize, you know, another group or another idea, and that you see more often with the religious authority. And just a fun fact, I mean, uh, you, you probably notice in America, for example, the people who demonize Muslims the most are the religious right, more than, say, the non-religious or the secular. So just keep that in mind. So now when you talk about the priest and the concept of evil according to the priest, right? How do they define evil? And how do they uh, demonize other ideas or other uh, people? Well, first, the definition of evil. Evil is so central in the case of the priest. Evil is a foundation, not a secondary uh, outcome. So number one, it stems out of, he said, and that's his word, a cauldron. It's like a, a pot of water boiling. All right, so I want to have this imagery. Uh, so basically, this evil is coming out of this pot, this cauldron of unsatisfied hatred. So that's also very important because if it is unsatisfied, it's never uh, fulfilled. This hatred is like a non-stop hatred. Uh, this hatred is like a fuel, uh, this uh, unlimited source of hatred, this fuel, you know, feeding this uh, pot, this cauldron that's producing evil. So you could imagine this, uh, you know, unlimited supply of hatred that is feeding the priest's uh, mind, right? Uh, and they live off of that hatred, according to him. So this imagery is important here. So as a result, this hatred, or this evil rather, is original. So here you start with good. Good is the root. Here evil is the root. So it's original. It is the beginning of everything. So that guy or that person is starting with uh, evil, with the concept of evil. And he bases everything on that evil. And also, as a result, he said, the essential act in the conception of slave morality. So evil is also so important and foundational to this uh, type of morality that he calls a slave morality. Uh, nowadays, we can call it victim morality. So we have a whole morality that is based on evil instead of basing it on good. And this is how you classify, this is how you categorize uh, other uh, people, other ideas. So he's saying basically that evil is so important, so central to this type of morality uh, that is a weak morality, the morality of, you know, the slave uh, or, or the weak, etc. So again, according to, to Nietzsche, you see this very, very big divide between uh, these two, uh, basically, uh, ideas. And despite the fact that both bad and evil are the opposite of good, so they're united in that way that their opposite is one, you're gonna see that striking difference between these two 
uh, supposedly synonymous ideas or synonymous, uh, you know, uh, nouns, right? Uh, but there is such a big difference when you start digging deep into uh, the origin. And that's the idea of the book, the ge genealogy, right? The origin of bad and the origin of evil. You're going to see that this is far, far worse. So I hope I did a bit of justice to that and a bit of uh, analogy or, or comparison between this idea and uh, what we have in Islam, the fact that... Um, uh, priesthood, especially when uh, it goes overboard, right, and uh, becomes this uh, huge religious authority, uh, it's not good f even for the religious people, right? And it undermines the basis of religion because it takes over and redefines everything, right, and brands everything according to its uh, uh, interest and benefit. Okay, until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.